what is going on everybody so here is one of my favorite motorcycles of all time and uh, I'll explain why it's one of my favorite motorcycles this is a BMW R100 GS Paris Dakar now I've had this bike for a few years now going on four and what got me into this actual particular model was the Paris Dakar rally and some of you might have heard of it and if you haven't it's a rally that literally takes place from Paris, France to Dakar, Senegal, Africa. It's this 3,000 mile plus grueling five day rally race that was made super famous in the mid to late 80s. And it's been going on up until about maybe 10 years ago because of terrorist attacks, they stopped doing it in this particular location. Well, this bike was developed specifically for this ra rally race. The early variants in the mid 80s BMW essentially slapped an R100 motor on this chassis, modified the suspension more aftermarket if you see some of the BMW GS uh, race bikes. and But essentially what you are seeing, minus some aftermarket aesthetics, is what competed in this grueling race. And BMW had won several of the years, mid 80s to late 80s, uh, because of this bike. So then they started, they're like, wow, this bike's really reliable. It just completed this rally without any hiccups. I think we're going to try to sell this to the public. That's where this bike came in. And it truly is the most stout motorcycle I have ever owned in my life. And what I mean by stout is that I had raced this bike. If you, some of you might have also heard of this race, is called the Mint 400. And it's this race. In fact, I still have the stickers on it from when I raced. Um, it's a race that takes place in Nevada. It's 400 miles and it's some of the most grueling uh, terrain known to man. I'd say a lot of machines fail because of the terrain. Well, I competed in this race with this particular bike right here, this exact bike. <laughs> I was absolutely blown away how tough this motorcycle is. And you gotta keep in mind, this is nearly 30 years plus old. It's a 1990 model. So it's 32 years old and it did this race without a single hiccup and i'm talking about if you want to see how grueling it is i'm going to show you something this heat shield or this protector right here is completely melted right here it's melted because the sand was so deep in parts of this race that it was up to the cylinder heads that's how deep the sand was that it was the sand was pushing with such force on this the shield that it was melting because of the headers because they were also so hot working and trying to get through the sand. I had high sighted this bike about 40 miles an hour, got ejected, went into a cactus patch, and I was covered in cactuses and I'm trying to get the cactuses out. And when I came running back to this bike, it was on its side for, I don't know, several minutes, still running. And I picked it up and it's like, bring it on. So that in itself is the basis of why I'm so passionate about these GS models. They're just the most stout motorcycles I've ever had the privilege of riding and owning. I'll never get rid of this bike because well, right now I'm in beautiful Colorado. In fact, I'm on a 500 mile plus re road trip right now with this bike. I figured I'd do a video of why I'm absolutely enamored with the R100 Paris Dakar. Now there's other variants of the BMW Airhead that's for the ADV off-road lifestyle. In fact, there's the F650 GS. I owned one of those. It was a 2001 model, single cylinder, absolutely phenomenal motorcycle. There's also a lot of other options out there that manufacturers that build great motorcycles. Honda builds the legendary XR600, which I've ridden before. Absolutely bulletproof motorcycle. The KLR650 has been around for decades. That's another phenomenal motorcycle. But why I come running back to the R100 or just any of the Paris Dakar variants is because these bikes are special in their own because they're very widely usable. Their, their motives of their riding style. You can be going 100 miles an hour down the highway, one-handed, and it rides like a touring bike, or you could be on single track, off-road, in the middle of nowhere, riding through, you know, waist deep water. They're very versatile. I, I would say that's the, probably their, one of the number one attributes is their reliability and their versatility of, of a variety of terrain. They'll go through just about anything. 
So I'll give you a little walk around on this bike and why some detail aesthetics of it, what makes it really neat and the pros and cons. So let's start with the pros and the basics of what this bike is all about. This motor is a 1000 cc twin. So it's literally a boxer, also known as a boxer or a posed cylinder. Pistons are going back and forth like this. It's a two cylinder, 1000 cc, and it is carbureted. Pairs of bean carburetors on each side and it is driven via, which is a very famous BMW attribute, they've been doing it for the last hundred years plus, is it is a drive shaft. There's no chain, there's no maintenance. Well, I wouldn't say it's maintenance free, but it's very little maintenance. In fact, when I say maintenance is, you literally check to see if you have any cracks in these boots, right there, right there, and you change the oil in your rear drive line. That is it, they're incredibly maintenance free. I'm gonna take the side case off just so you get a better view. This is my travel suitcase. These are factory BMW bags, which I use all the time. In fact, there's one on the other side, but I just didn't ride with it this trip because I only needed one. So here gives you a better idea of <coughs> the rear suspension line. And yes, this is a factory ride height of this bike. They sit very high. I'm very short. I'm five foot eight. And uh, you'll see me, I'm always on my tippy toes. The first bit of riding this bike when I first got it was a little nerve wracking because, well, this is where a con comes into play. These aren't light. I'd have to look up the exact weight of these, but these are not light whatsoever. And it makes sense because you got a thousand cc's, heavy frame, they're not light. So if you are looking for a lighter bike, obviously that's a con or something you need to think about. These aren't, but where these come into of a viable riding ability is their low center of gravity. What I mean by low center of gravity is some bikes, they, they have a high center of gravity and they tip over very easy. BMWs are some of the best low CG motorcycles I've ridden. This motor sits very low and why that is a plus is because when you're out riding and you're coming up real slow to stuff, you want a low CG because it stays centered. It's easy to maneuver, it's not tip happy, and so I would think in any scenario, I would want a low CG bike. And this bike in itself has a very low center of gravity, which is makes riding in very difficult conditions a plus. Now, this bike is, uh, like I said, a 1990 model. You have disc brakes in the front, <clears throat> factory Brembo discs, and then you have drum brakes in the rear. Uh, the GS Paris Dakar models have a factory oil cooler, a crash bar, and I've used that extensively, as well as a uh, front uh, off-road telescope, uh, telescoping front forks that's uh, really... <laughs> I've hit some jumps with this bike and it didn't even phase it. So another pro about this bike and which kind of contributes to the weight, this fuel tank is 9.4 US gallons. Yes, 9.4. You are approaching what some small cars are. You know, my this has carries more fuel than my MG Midget from 1970. So the range on this bike is absolutely phenomenal. In fact, I was originally planning on doing the whole 400 miles of the Mint 400 nonstop with this tank and an extra fuel bladder. That's that just shows how. <laughs> The, how much range that these have. Uh, another attribute I love about this is the storage options. You got that, you got a rear cage, uh, or case storage for this, for your backpack, side cases, for your passenger as well. Uh, driver, or I should say rider ability aesthetics, it's very neutral riding. It, it sits completely neutral. I can do 250, 300 miles a day, not be one bit sore. Gauges are very easy to read. Uh, about a 7574, 7400 RPM redline, factory heated grips, and uh, yes, when in doubt, throttle out and turn on the gas dummy because you actually do need to turn on the fuel on both sides of the tank. So, what is this like to ride? Well, we'll go out and do some riding with it and give you a first person point of view, but it rides incredible. On the highway, it's like a sport touring bike, very comfortable, will do 95 miles an hour all day long. Off-road, rides just like a dirt bike. It's like a little bit heavier of a dirt bike. It's very predictable. The torque is right off the bat. You will notice that when riding these is that the torque is instantaneous being drive shaft and that it's a Boxer 1000. It's 
instantaneous. So pulls all the way through the RPM band and uh, it's not slow is the best way to put it. Now, we gotta get into some of the cons because no bike is perfect. Cons, well, this bike is 30 years old. Stuff will inevitably need maintenance. And a great example of something that needs maintenance is I am leaking oil right now. I found this out on this trip from my shift shaft seal. That's something that will need to be maintained when I get back. This bike will get me home, and that's why I love these bikes, because they are the most stout motorcycles ever, but they're not maintenance free. This bike is 30 years old. There always will be attention needed. You need to do valve adjustments periodically. And now the Paris Dakar market is becoming very collectible. This bike is starting to become pretty rare. And if they are being listed on the market, they usually go pretty fast or they go for absolutely ridiculous amounts of money. A, I think it was had a 200 mile total odometer, uh, essentially new Paris Dakar, went on bringing a trailer for I think nearly $38,000, which that's mind boggling to me, but people will pay for something that is very sought after. So you do not see many of these uh, on the market. If you are on the market, you do find one, you want to be on the lookout for things like really loud valve train. Yes, it can be fixed, but for you got to think of maintenance things ahead. If it's smoking a lot, could be, need rings or the valve seats aren't right. So always be on the lookout for detail aesthetics on these. When I got this from the owner, it was pretty dang well maintained and uh, it's been an incredibly easy motorcycle to maintain. If you have some basic knowledge of how to maintain a motorcycle, I would say that's where the pro of these come in. Yes, they're not maintenance free, but if you do have to do maintenance on them, I'm not kidding. The factory toolkit, and I'll show it to you, is every tool you need to work on this bike and repair anything on this bike. The factory toolkit will fix anything on this bike. Bolt has every socket, wrench, and Allen wrench needed to take apart and put back together this bike. And I'm gonna show you that toolkit. That's a factory Corbin seat from like 91. It's not as comfortable as it looks, so. <laughs> All right, this is the factory toolkit. And I absolutely love this because I'm not kidding. I do not bring any other tools uh, except this. And I've had to do not really much maintenance on this. Like I said, over the four years that I've had this bike, valve adjustments and oil changes is essentially all I've had to do. This will be my newest thing to uh, be replaced is that shift shaft seal, which like I said, it's 30 years old. You can't expect perfection on a motorcycle. And all right, here's the toolkit. That is a factory <laughs> toolkit. Every wrench, Here's even the tire iron for the single-sided swing arm, which is fantastic when you want to work on the brakes, change the tire, you literally four bolts and that wheel is off. So working on these bikes is a very, very uh, mechanic friendly motorcycle. And I love that. Like I said, there's a multitude of motorcycles out there that I think are, are you can't go wrong. Kawasaki makes a KLR. I love the KLR. There's pros and cons to that bike as well. Doing 80 miles an hour, the vibration is high being a single cylinder. My F650 was the same way. At 80 miles an hour, there was vibration and the RPMs were quite high. Another question somebody probably asked, well, why wouldn't I buy a new adventure bike like a KTM? And that's not a bad thing. I think KTM makes a wonderful bike. Why I'm drawn to these particular airhead engines, especially the older ones, is because if you have a mechanical failure on a KTM, in the middle of Africa, the probability of you being able to fix that without having to order parts or, or doing so on the, the side of the road fixes is pretty mi minimal. The, the odds of if it broke, you'd probably be SOL. Something breaks on these or needs maintenance. They're pretty straightforward and they're very mechanical. There's nothing electronic on these except literally the spark to the spark plugs. Everything else is mechanical. And in my opinion, I like that for simplicity and ease of working on. Bikes are getting so complicated these days with electronic suspension, electronic fuel injection, electronic, you know, valve advanced timing, and everything is electronic. It's all one big computer. When that computer craps out, you are literally stuck in the middle of nowhere. This, if you lose compression on a cylinder, it'll keep going. If you have carburetor issues and it's still getting fuel to one side, it will keep going. 
I mean, there's stories of these being almost out of oil and they kept going. And the stories on the Dakar Rally series of these having some mechanical issues and they're still going is partly because there's just not a lot of electronic things to go run. Usually when electrical things fail, it's bad. It means that you gotta fix that electrical issue and, or it doesn't keep going. And I feel that newer bikes are becoming much more difficult to work on, whereas this, it is not. So that, that is kind of my answer to the new thought on new motorcycles. I love new motorcycles. I think they're great. And if they're under warranty, wonderful. Well, this has been out of warranty for the last 30 years, and I still trust it to ride across America or Africa or anywhere else in the world. That's why these have been ridden across the world so many times is because, well, because of this bike. So that answers that. This bike at 90 miles an hour is at like 5,500 RPM, and it's, it, you know, It'll do 100 miles an hour all day long without without any hiccups. So, um, yeah, factory toolkit, incredibly easy to work on. And uh, yeah, this is my beloved R100 Paris Dakar, and uh, it sold me the day it crossed the finish line at the mid 400. I knew that this was this bike had earned its spot in my collection because it truly is. The best way to put it at the end of the day is the most stout, reliable motorcycle that will literally take you anywhere on this planet, and it is this motorcycle. So we'll go for a little ride, get you a first-hand look of what it's like to ride one, and uh, thank you for watching this video, and you guys hit that subscribe button if you can, and more motorcycle videos to come out. Thanks for watching, guys.